Today we're going to be talking about DSL bonding. DSL bonding is where you would have two or more DSL copper lines bonded together in order to increase the speed on that line. However, before we get into DSL bonding, I think it is really important for me to give you a brief explanation of how DSL lines work for those of you who would like to know how DSL bonding work but don't exactly know how DSL lines work, I think this would be of great help to you. We have two types of DSL services. We have ADSL and VDSL. ADSL stands for Asynchronous Digital Subscriber Line and VDSL stands for Very High Frequency Digital Subscriber Line. Now ADSL is the first generation of DSLs and VDSL is a second generation. We use VDSL mostly for higher speed services like IPTV, voice over IP, anything that requires high bandwidth is what we'll use VDSL for. More than 80% of all DSL lines use copper facilities. Now copper is what we use from the beginning for telephone lines and we've been using this for over 100 years. Only recently we started using fiber optics. Just about 20% of all subscribers actually use fiber optics. In order for internet information to be sent over the telephone line, we use what we call a DSLAM, which stands for Digital Subscriber Line Access Multiplexer. Now, internet information is multiplex and demultiplex between the DSLAM and the modem. The further the distance between the DSLAM card and the modem, the worse the service gets, the slower the service gets. The, the shorter the distance, the better the service is. So if the distance is short, you get a very high speed. If the distance is long, you get a very slow speed. Unfortunately, it will be quite a long time before every home or business qualifies for fiber to the premises. So what ISPs do to solve this problem is to use pair bonding, where they would bond two or more lines together in order to increase the speed. Here we're going to be talking about a basic ADSL line. An ADSL line originates at the central office. Here we have the telephone switch. And your particular telephone line comes out of the telephone switch with your phone number and your dial tone and it's connected to a DSLAM card. And that DSLAM card is also connected back to the internet. And your telephone line is connected from that DSLAM card to a cross box on the street. This cross box is located approximately um, two kilometers from the central office, approximately. Some cases it could be a little bit more, some it could be a bit less. Now the service technician would go to this cross box on the street and he will connect the dial tone to another cable going to the subscriber's premises. Now at the subscriber's premises, we have what we call a splitter. And the purpose of this splitter is to isolate the modem from the phone line to prevent interference between the two. Here we have eight megabits per second being sent from the central office to the customer's premises. Now if this line is one kilometer in distance, by the time it gets to the modem, the speed would only be six megabits per second at the modem. Two kilometers, five megabits per second. Three kilometers, three megabits per second. So you see what's happening here. The greater the distance, the lower the speed will be by the time it gets here. Four kilometers, it's down to one megabits per second. And five kilometers, 500 kilobits per second. So the greater the distance, the lower the speed is going to be by the time it gets here. Because DSL services are distance sensitive. The greater the distance, the less the speed is going to be. The shorter the distance, the more the speed is going to be by the time it gets to the modem. Another example of what we have just talked about 
of loss on the line depending on the speed that's being sent from the DSLAM. Here we have a 20 megabit signal being sent from the DSLAM out. Now this is ADSL 2 plus. Now we're sending 20 megabits so at one kilometer the subscriber is actually getting 16 megabits per second. Now at two kilometers the subscriber is getting 10 megabits per second of data. At three kilometers they're getting five megabits per second of data and at four kilometers they're getting no service at all. As you remembered with ADSL at eight megabits at five kilometers they were still getting 500 kilobits so they were still getting service at five kilometers but here we have a greater speed and it's not getting as far as five kilometers at three kilometers that's where it stops by the time it hits four kilometers there's no service getting that point so this reconfirms what I've just talked about the higher the speed the shorter the distance the signal will travel so customers in this area would have a very hard time getting high-speed internet for services like IPTV and voice over IP. They will not be able to get the bandwidth at a far distance at four or five kilometers in order to power those services. So ISPs recognize this and in the next slide we're going to talk about what they did. VDSL now VDSL stands for very high frequency DSL and DSL as you know stands for digital subscriber line. Now the diagram at the top is the one we were talking about before with the ADSL line running at 8 megabits per second. This one is ADSL. The one at the bottom is actually a VDSL line and we have a DSLAM card within the cross box which is different from the ones that we were talking about before. So what ISPs did to solve the problem with distance in order to get high speed services to customers premises is to move a DSLAM card to the cross box. Now in this particular case this DSLAM card is running 100 megabits per second which qualifies it as VDSL and in order to run the VDSL you also have to have a VDSL modem at the customer's premises. Also what we have here is a fiber optic cable feeding this DSLAM card. Uh, the reason they're using a fiber optic cable is to reduce the loss that they were getting on the copper cable between the central office and the DSLAM. Now they're running the fiber optic cable from the internet right through to the DSLAM card because fiber optic cables do not have anywhere near the loss that a copper cable do. So if you send 100 megabits from the internet, you're going to get something very close to that 100 megabits per second at the DSLAM card. So you're not having the loss that you were having on copper. So we got around the problem there where we're able to get the correct speed at the DSLAM card on the outside. Now the only problem we have now is to get in our line from the DSLAM card to the customer's brand using a copper cable. Now at 500 meters from the DSLAM to the customer, there's a loss of 25 megabits. So now we get 75 megabits per second at a customer which is 500 meters away from the DSLAM card. But another customer that is one kilometer away, all they're getting is 30 megabits per second. Now the first customer will qualify for uh, services like IPTV that require high bandwidth, but this customer would not. So ISPs are still faced with another problem where um, they're not able to supply high-speed services to all of their customers. And by the way, this copper line is still being used for telephone services. The phone line is still riding on this copper. We're just using the fiber optic cable 
as an internet line only. So on the next slide, we're going to talk about the solution that the ISPs came up with in order to solve this problem with distance. Port bonding. Port bonding is the solution to this problem. Now what ISPs did was to add a second DSLAM card within the cross box. And this second DSLAM card is bonded to the first DSLAM card that was there before. Now this second DSLAM card doesn't have a telephone line connected to it because the customer only needs one telephone line. So this side will be called a dry loop. A dry loop is a line that doesn't have any dial tone on it, just straight internet. So now on the other side of this line, we have a copper line being connected just like the first one and this copper line is connected directly to the modem. It doesn't need a pot splitter because there's no dial tone on this line. And this modem has dual ports for the internet. So once the signal is fed into this modem, that's where the port bonding occurs right within the modem. So these two signals, which will be 30 megabits per second each, will become 60 megabits per second within the modem bonded and sent out to each of the Ethernet ports as one 60 megabits per second Ethernet signal. Data coming back from the modem would be sent back through both lines to the DSLAM and the signal would be bonded and sent back to the internet as one signal along the fiber optic cable as well. This is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching. If this training has been helpful to you, please don't forget to click on the like button below and if you haven't already done so, uh, click on the subscribe button so that you can take advantage of our new training videos as they're released.